Well, I'm going to welcome you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining our meeting tonight. I, I'm just so thrilled the Holy Spirit is here to minister life to you and all those that are here present. So I pray the Holy Spirit will give me the words in this hour. Open your ears and open your heart to the unction of the Holy Ghost to, to fill your life with peace and, and faith. So open them up right now in Jesus' name and listen to what the Lord has for us tonight. I'm going to open right now on the 8th day of 11th. I didn't know I was going to share this exactly. But it'll fit because on the 8th day of November, a few days ago, I was very tired. I don't know what we'd done. I, I was halfway out of it, I guess, and about to go to bed. And I thought, Lord, you know, you haven't spoken to me lately. I, I was kidding a little bit, but not really. I said, Lord, I'd really like to hear from you because, you know, there's a, a relationship you have. And I began to write because that's how it works for me. And here's what he spoke to me. He said, your land will stay intact, but will be roughed up some. This is the nation. You must stand solid and direct my word for the results. There will be a brief reprieve and then a resolve after a time. There will be mass casualties of non-believers and believers who refuse to respond to my leadings. Equip the remnant and be confident in your deliveries. This is to me. For you. Constant hardship will follow those who refuse to listen to you and others, teachers. Not referring to anyone else. You will find that foundation teaching will, with revelation by my spirit will continue to draw many to that voice. Pray for courts and judges. Disregard politicians, but stand behind those who are his. If you understand what that means. That means they're sold out to the Lord. We need to be behind those. Courts and judges. I heard it so loud. Pray for courts and judges. Praise God. It was kind of interesting because it was only a few nights later we turned on a well-known prophet and he blurted out the same thing. And I thought, wow, and particularly the casualties and the, the things that are about to take place. And so, leading with that tonight, where am I going with all that? Well, I'm going to start out with something right here, because you see, there's something coming right now, and it's not going to be pretty. So said there'd be a brief reprieve and then some other things, so that's probably some political things that are about to take place, and, and we'll welcome those, but I'll tell you what really needs to be done. And this is kind of, well, this will come from right here. The body of Christ must get engaged. And, you know, I've learned some things even, even recently. Uh, but let me go here for a minute. Let's go to, I'm just going to read a, a scripture here, re, re, Hebrews 11, 1. You're probably familiar with this scripture. Uh, it's now faith is the substance of those things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you go to Hebrews 1 in the Amplified, it says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being proof of things we do not see, and conviction of the reality and so on. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Okay, at last time, and some of you here heard the message. I talked a bit about the difference between the soul and the spirit. I talked about the fact we're, we are a spirit being. We're, we're in the likeness of God. We have a soul, and, and we live in a physical body. And, and a, a message or two before that, I was talking about how when Jesus said, uh, in Mark 4, he's talking about we're going to go across the lake now. He said, let's go to the other side. And I brought some revelation that night. Now, that other side meant to me, I mean, you could preach your own sermons about that scripture because he did go across the lake and did all kinds of things. However, what I saw one time ministering that was going to the other side means we have to move from the soul to the spirit. We've got to get our life going with the spirit of God. The soulish man has no effect where we're at right now. To plug into these things and stand erect, because see, there, there could be a lot of terror. I mean, if I, I read that prophecy and it was confirmed by more than one, when it talked about mass casualties and non-believers and believers who refuse to follow my leadings, that should be speaking to somebody. <laughs> that should be speaking. 
that should give us a clue that, that there's a lot of joy there for the people that are followed after God. But you see, then I, I put this question there, since we're talking about faith as a substance of hope, then what clouds our faith? That was a question that came up as I looked at this today. What clouds our faith? Why can't we just go right, move out into there? What clouds our faith? It's something for you to think about because there may be something that's holding you back with your life. And usually it's fear. And there's no question about it. Uh, if, if we really deal with what's going on right now, if we deal with what the real enemy is right now, it's the spirit of fear. It's the spirit of fear. And... And it's propagated through everybody that can spew it out of their mouth. But one of our secrets is we can't walk in that. So when I talk about what, what clouds our faith, that means you can't have faith and fear at the same time. I tell a story a lot of times, and I, I didn't intend to get into that, but it was a business situation one time, and I'll stay out of most of that detail. But uh, Sandy and I were in business a few years. Well, we still are. Pretty much, but it, we were in a. We had a company we'd started from scratch, and we'd bought the rights to a major product, to label it and so on, and everything. We did everything right. Spent a lot of money on it, uh, and I'm really jumping jumping through this story fast. But one day I got served with a federal from a federal court. In other words, I got sued by a multinational company over that product. It was blindsided, had no idea there would be a problem with it when I bought it from the manufacturer and bought the rights, I thought. Well, anyway, the, the, the story for me tonight to share with this is when that hit me, I, I went to an attorney and with that first serving, he said, it'll cost you 20000 for me to answer that. And I'm thinking, well, $20,000, we started this company from scratch. We've had, never had a problem all these years. We're doing really well. Finally, we're getting on our feet. And said, if if I answer that, if it goes any further, the next the next thing will be fifty thousand. And he said, if it ever goes to a trial, it'll start at a half a million. We're talking about federal court. We're not talking about something in downtown Deadwood or Rapid City. We're talking about federal court. So the, my point is, I will tell you, even though I knew the word, it was in me. Walked in these things, I immediately just froze. I, I mean, fear had me because I thought we, we've been down a couple of times in our life. And is it coming again? I can't we can't do this again. Lose everything over this. We just can't do it. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was that way for a few hours. I was very numb. I have to, I, I'm ashamed to say it, but I was. But it's a testimony. And I'm going along not knowing what I'm going to do. And uh, all of a sudden, the light bulb came on. And I said, I refuse to fear. And I want to tell you something, as soon as I did that, fear left, faith came, and it was just a matter, God worked the whole thing out for us. Before it was said and done, we, we paid 5000 or something, and, and we, we were in the courts. We, I mean, we saw God move amazingly. But if I'd have stayed in fear, he'd have eaten our lunch. I hope that's a message people can relate to. Because you cannot have fear and faith at the same time. You can't. It's impossible. If you're going to walk in fear, that's the devil's medicine. If you're going to walk with faith, that's where God is. So we need to right now, just dealing with you personally, and I, I come up with a word here called fear gate. Uh, fear gate. That's a question for you. Is there some gate in your life where fear is getting in? Because when we're walking into the times we are, and we're here right now, you know, when they say, well, you're going to be locked up, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. If you don't behave, we'll come and give you an injection at your door. I mean, all this stuff. No way, no way am I going to fear that. And you can't either. But you've got to say it with your mouth. You've got to stay out of this with your mouth. You've got to release your faith vocally. And you've got to deal with it when those little little messages of fear, like, what are they going to do when they come to your door? Well, <laughs> they're not coming to my door first place. I've got a lot of stuff posted around my doors in Jesus' name, and, and they're not going to be there. So that's just a nugget for the night, okay? We're going to move on from there. Watch out for the fear gate in your life. If you walk clear of fear, they can't do a thing to you. That, the only weapon the devil has is fear. 
but he operates it through people. But, you know, you know even, even people that he's got all nutsy and full of drugs, if you're not walking in fear and you're standing in faith, it'd be hard for them to touch you because you're ministering spiritual around you all the time. Amen. And they're responding to your voice. They are. You're ministering spirits, your angels are responding to what you say. And they love to have faith statements. So anyway, we can go on from there. But the other thing that might stop your faith would be lack of knowledge. And that's a place where people aren't always really, they want to say, well, I know just about enough. You know, I'm, I just uh, get up in the morning and I say, God bless my family, and I go on with my day. No, it's, you need more than that. I'm not a browbeater, but you need to learn faith. You need to stay in the Word. And you need to learn, you need to read and get revelation from the Holy Spirit. There's, I'm telling you, God will minister to every born again child of God, give you revelation knowledge. And there's just a little nugget with that, uh, without getting too much into that. But here's a, here's a real way to, to get there. You open up the Bible or you're going down the road in your vehicle or you're doing whatever, and you get a question, something about the Lord or something that relates to that. Let the Lord answer that question. If you get a question like looking at a scripture, you're curious about a scripture. What does that mean? What is that now faith? What's that mean? Well, it says now for one thing, and that's an action. Now is an action. And that's another thing about tonight. I want you to realize it's an action. Do something. We have to do something. Just waiting for something, what's going to happen, I don't know. And Man, I'm into the prophets. I, I love the prophet ministries. I do. But there's one thing I know about it. Just because they prophesy, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's us to, up to us to pray it in. Stand behind it. If a prophet says it, stay in there. Grab it. If you bear witness to it, you know, you have peace about what they said. Lady or man, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, uh, pray it in. Say, praise God, that sounds good. Let's make it happen. And start praying that in. That's a, a lot of people just think if a prophet said it, it's going to happen. No, it may not. They hear from God. I heard from God on this one. And I, when I heard another prophet, a well-known big prophet, say the same thing, I said, wow, thank you, Lord. That's good. <laughs> so anyway, praise God. won't get bogged down in that. But that's the other thing about that Hebrews. You know, you hear a lot of scriptures about Hebrews now faith, but it really is now. Now is the time to gird up. It's time to gird up, brothers and sisters. It is. I mean, we've, this is not a game. The devil intends to kill us all. And he's going to do it through whatever means he has all over the earth, not just here in our city or county or our nation. It's everywhere. It's, it's a rampage over the earth right now. But guess what? God's bigger than the devil, ain't he? Isn't he? Is God bigger than the devil? Well, yes, I believe he is. Now let's go. Let's move on from there and uh, figure out where I'm at. But uh, this, this leads me to Isaiah 59, 17. Because, you see, God is interested in our nation. I, I speak a lot about the nation because I'll tell you, it's in my blood, it's in my bones, it's in my heart. This nation is, is big to me for more than one reason. And some of you that heard me teach, you know that uh, we, we talk a lot about the first landing. We talk about uh, reviving the root of our nation and so on. I've got a logo with that. In that, in that logo is a cross and a flag. They're all the same. I, in my way of thinking, you can't separate the flag from the, from the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can't do it. This is God's nation, so that's where I come from. Uh, I mean, that's where I'm at. Okay, in Isaiah 59, 17, and of course it's talking about, depends on where you want to start with that, that verse, but this is pretty good. Uh, it, it starts up there a little bit in 16, and the uh, Lord is speaking. He said, He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation to him, speaking of the blood and of Jesus. And his own righteousness, it sustained him. For listen to this. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garment of vengeance for clothing. This is talking about some warfare here. Vengeance and was clad with zeal as a cloak. Now here's what he said in 18. According to their deeds, 
he will repay. We're talking about the enemies that want to take us over, want to take over the earth. I know this is the Old Testament. Uh, I know where it's at, but at the same time, this is for today. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. The coastlands will fully repay, so they shall fear. The coastlands, did you hear that? When you think of the coastlands, what do you think about in the United States of America? It says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, the west coast, and his glory from the rising of the sun, east coast. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Now, what is that standard? I'm telling you, God is serious. He's wanting to rev up his people right now. He is. He's using people like me to stir the pot. Get you moving. <laughs> Wonder what I am. Well, that's, that's it. But see, he's serious about it, but who is the standard? What is the standard? Well, if you look up what a standard is, it could be a flag, it could be that. But to me, first of all, the standard is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. Who else is a standard? The body of Christ. Who's the body of Christ? Everybody say, I am. I am. We are. We're the body. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. It says in Ephesians and, and in uh, Colossians, other places, He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And we're seated together with Him in heavenly places. Am I right about that? That's what the Bible says. That means we have a function. That means when we take that now thing and we say, that's now, isn't it? Now mean, must mean now. We need to rise up and do something. And, and so, you see, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of energy there when you talk about a flood and talk about judgment. And the amazing thing about it is we already seen that on one coast. Uh, I mean, I use this scripture every once in a while, but we're already seeing how it hit the East Coast and something unraveled, didn't it? Something happened there. Well, what happened? Well, a bunch of mamas got mad for one thing. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God for women of, of faith that's got the, that got the unction. But don't ever kid yourself, the Holy Ghost was with them. Blood-bought mothers. And they're going to be a lot to do with the downfall of a lot of these things that are going on. Amen? Mm -hmm. Better believe it. Can't mess with my babies, right? Now I'm going to switch gears here a little bit because this will not really switch, but, but I'm going to nail a couple things here. And, and uh, if I offend somebody, I don't apologize uh, about it because if you're offended by this, uh, you probably deserve it. Not, you, not anyone here. But, you know, the, the, the thing that's really troubling me and a lot of people is the church is not moving. Amen. Now the ecclesia, the blood bought born again people, sometimes we're calling them a remnant these days, that's a little bit different. They're getting fired. People are starting to get fired. But the church in general is not. And, and, and I, know you, I know you know this, maybe as well and better than I do. But I know it pretty well because I've been out there a while. Now, I want to show you something here in chapter 2 of Jeremiah. And you can turn there if you have your Bible. If you don't have it, uh, just make note of it. And I was reading this one day, and you know, it's not one of those things that you're reading, not expecting to see something. That's where the Holy Spirit will start to speak to you about a couple of things and make it really clear. But this will fit tonight. It will fit, okay? And here we have in verse 11 of chapter 2 of Jeremiah, has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods? But my people have changed their glory. For what does not profit? Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. Two evils. Now, I know he's talking about the children of Israel, but you can transplant that right in today. Amen. You can put that right here today. They've committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. I'm looking at that one day, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, that's the Holy Spirit. Living water is the Holy Spirit. Am I right? Sure, you're, sure I'm right. And hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold 
or can hold no water. What is that? That's the local, I mean, that's the churches in America that a lot of them are denominational, and some of them aren't. Some are even called full gospel. Some are called seeker-friendly. They don't have the Holy Ghost. I don't care. You can walk into those. You know, for years we've struggled with some things because we've walked into some of these places expecting to, you know, something cool. You walk in there and there's no witness of the Holy Spirit there at all. And they jump around and they dance and, you know, they do all these kind of things or else they do whatever they're going to do. Maybe they don't in these small denominational churches or any bigger ones. But see, there's no Holy Ghost there. There's no capacity for the Holy Spirit. You can read that yourself. If I'm, if I'm reading that wrong, you can correct me, but not, not till I'm done spitting. <laughs> Just kidding. But you got it? You can't, if people aren't hungry for the Lord, if they're not willing to, to jump in this thing and get involved, there's no, there's no place for them. They're going to empty out. I mean, I, you know, I, I know a few years ago, we, we came into this thing kind of after the charismatic move had gotten a good start. And, but uh, there was a church in, uh, well, a lot of people heard of IHOP in Kansas City. Um, the man that started that, uh, started this church, and he got a little church going on there. And uh, I may not have this story exactly right, but I'll do the best I can. And one day, God said, go, go buy 700 chairs. He said, 700 chairs? He probably had 50 people in his church. So he figured he could hear from the Lord. He went out and bought 700 chairs, or borrowed them, or stole them, or something. I doubt if he stole them. I'm just kidding about that. And do you know, in, in a matter of days, they filled those 700 chairs? You know where they came from? They came from Lutheran churches, Methodist churches, Catholic churches, you name it, every kind of a church because the Spirit of God began to move and they came in there because the Holy Ghost brought them in there and filled up 700 chairs like overnight. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart of hearts that's about to happen. I believe there's going to be a strong exodus. Yeah, that's why I stand up, you know, myself and others like me. That's why we're preaching the Word of God. But people are hungry for the Word of God. They're hungry. By, Jesus said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. You get hungry, God will fill you. But you have to go where the water tank is. Amen. You can see, a, uh, not that it matters at all, but you can see another place in Jeremiah 14, 3, where it says it again, said the nobles have sent their lads for water, a type of the Holy Spirit I wrote there. They went to the cisterns and found no water, no anointing. I'm not down on anybody. I'm not trying to crash churches. That's not, my, that's not what I'm called to do. I'm not called to criticize or any of that. I'm just called to preach this word, and, and I've got to preach it like it. God gives it to me. It's time for us Christians to rise up. And you know what? There's a lot of people out there right, right there. Because, you know, personally, uh, I love to lead people to the Lord. And, and I found out that it, there, it's ripe out there right now. It's easier to lead people to the Lord right now than I've seen in 20, 30 years. They're everywhere. They're hungry. But we have to open our mouth and act like we know the Lord, you know. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Are you still here? <laughs> Are you gone home like a guy said? Praise God. Well, you know, those are things I wanted to share with you because, you see, it is, it is a matter of, of, of the Holy Spirit moving. And it's like that. Uh, we were going last week, and I, I, I brought a couple scriptures from that. But, you know, uh, it, it's got to do with the, all these things that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. You know, I, I put that message out there, and, you know, I didn't, I didn't talk about a lot of things there, but if you listen to that, you couldn't help but want of the Holy Ghost. You couldn't help but want a heavenly language. And, you know, I don't know about people. I mean, people are getting filled. I like you. I mean, I, you, just, you just watch the action that night, and the next day you're going down the road, and the Spirit of God is all over you. It still is. You know, still is. And, uh, and we're only talking a couple years ago. Or a year and a half ago, I don't know, but I like to see that. I like to see people get on fire. 
and also so <clears throat> you know tell me you tell me where we go from here uh it's just like i don't know where to go else from here right now but the two main weapons that we have you know what they are the main weapons that we have are the holy spirit and the word of god and you know what it says in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What does that mean? That means they're not what you think up in your mind. That's not the weapon. But they're mighty, it said, through God, till the pulling down of strongholds. See, that's where we have to operate. We can't operate in the flesh and expect the devil to run. But what we can operate in the spirit and get our faith built up and refuse to fear anything that happens. There's no place in fear. You know, I listened to some big-time preacher on TV the other day, just long enough to see what, because he was talking about fear. And, you know, as long as I listen to this man, and he's on TBN, and he's all this stuff, and he never one time told people how to deal with fear spiritually. Like, I refuse to fear. Like, fear's the enemy. And it says in Isaiah, it said, Jesus, God said, fear and terror are not of me. Doesn't he say that? He said, it's not of me. Somebody said, well, a little bit of fear is good. No, it is not. No fear is good. And if we can stay out of that, we're going to be just fine in these coming months, weeks, months, uh, years. I don't, we'll be just fine if we don't submit to fear. And brothers and sisters, as sure as I'm speaking to you right now, I'm telling you, just get rid of that fear. And I'll just speak to that fear. Somebody right now, I just sense it right now, and I know that's not live, but I know you're going to watch this video. And I know that fear has been something that's robbed your life completely. And you haven't been able to fear, figure it out. So I'm going to bind that spirit of fear on you right now. I almost know your name, but I'll bind it, and I'll tell you, just, just say with your own mouth, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You say that, and I tell you, you've got freedom headed your way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so I, I'm not sure where I'm at on this time thing. Um, since we're among friends here, <clears throat> I want to follow this through one more time here with 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I think it'll flow pretty good with it because if you've, if you've got it figured out right now, it's an attempt right now to get people to move out of the flesh into the spirit. Move out of the power of the, the soul and move into the power of the Holy Spirit and so on. And, <clears throat> and there's one hit thing here, and let me see, I'm trying to find it. In 2 Corinthians 5... Seven, and <clears throat> you'd recognize seven. Uh, seven says, "For we walk by faith and not by sight." And of course, when we set our faith and we do it now, then that's true. We want to walk about Hebrews eleven. We want to we want to go past that hope, and we got to get faith engaged, right? Well, here it says in <clears throat> in verse six. Therefore, we are confident, knowing that while we're at home in the body, listen to me, while we're at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. When we're all comfortable in our flesh, thinking that's going to handle everything, we're absent from the Lord. Isn't that an interesting scripture? And then he says in verse 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight. And in verse 8 says, We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Isn't that, isn't that, you know, some of these scriptures, we, you can go walk past them every day and not know what they say. But it's more and more about stepping into that realm where God really wants to speak to your heart, speak to your life, uh, bring confidence into you, and, <clears throat> and realize that, that that's what faith really, <clears throat> faith calls those things that be not as though they were. That's a whole other realm, but that's what faith is. Now, if you want to operate in faith, when you set your faith and you pray about it, you have to start really believing it's done. Otherwise, you're operating in the future somewhere. Future faith isn't so good. What good is when you bring that faith into now? Now faith is a substance. Now. And I couldn't help but think at one time I'm looking at that scripture. <clears throat> I thought if you had a, a garden hose out there in your backyard and it was plugged, no water would come through it, that's hope. The hose is there, the water's there, but nothing's happening. But you turn on the hose get that rid of that plug, and what happens? Water flows. That's putting faith to your hope. With hope, there's nothing going on. 
it's there. It's good to have hope. Hope, hope deferred makes the heart go sick. I know these scriptures. <laughs> but hope needs the power, needs to be unplugged, and you do it with your faith, and you do it with your mouth, in Jesus' name. Well, I've gone a long time for this tonight, and, but anyway, I pray in Jesus' name that this has made some sense. I hope this has made some sense. I'll put faith that it's got something to do. So before I leave right now in Jesus' name, I'm going to ask you if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life because you heard these things. You kind of like what you hear, but you don't know how to get there. You wonder what it's like to have the Holy Spirit working in your life. Well, do this right now. Say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life because the Bible says if I believe in my heart and say with my mouth that, that Jesus was raised from the dead, I shall be saved because with a... With the heart man believes, and with mouth confession is made unto faith and to salvation. So in Jesus' name, bless your day right now, and we'll take, talk again sometime. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glory.